today from the Superdome in New Orleans. It's a special Halloween presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Celebration here in the city of New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Superdome. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, you look at this Saints team as they interplay. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And last week, they put together a three-touchdown victory and were never challenged in that game. Let's see if they have a little bit of a letdown here. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. First drive coming up here for this New Orleans Saints offense and leading about a quarterback here in 2021 in his seventh NFL season, it's Jameis Winston. And he ought to have a lot of pep in his step after last week's performance because he did exactly as you want him to play if you're a coach. Three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, which usually means you're making a lot of right decisions out there. And got him to win. Calling no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Winston. That's caught by Marquez Callaway. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Winston to give, it's Kamara. The numbers there for Kamara from a week ago. 21 carries, 108 for the yardage and the score too. And the way they ran the ball last week's game has to be satisfying to their entire staff because they're seeing not just a back gain big yardage, but they're seeing an offensive line really in sync. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. First down carry, it's Kamara. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Here's Winston. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. They'll wind up losing a couple yards here on the play, and it'll be a third and about 13. Throwing, Winston. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. Time to see what this Tampa Bay Bucs offense has in store. They're led by the now seven-time Super Bowl champion, the MVP of Super Bowl 55, Charles. It's Tom Brady. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first half MVP, very likely they're going to say it's this man right here, the NFL's leader in touchdown passes to this point in the season. Still two months to go. But if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. The rushing numbers for Fournette from last week, very, very strong, well over 100 yards. He should get the ball early and often here, too. I mean, when you're riding the performance of last week into this game, 
his confidence level has to be off the charts. Go ahead and keep feeding him. Well, this defense for the Saints, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Seattle. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. So on the big tight end, Holdick. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without Holden. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Brady going to throw. He'll buy some time right. And he'll just get rid of it. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Fournette running out of the gun. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A shotgun give to Fournette. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the six. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. They'll go with a big bank for it. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. And now Coach Bruce Arians has made the call. His guys will go for two. Brady will look to throw for it. It's caught, and it's 8 nothing. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. One quarter down, eight nothing the score. Second and six. Play action now, Winston. Rush coming, and he's taken down. 
Shaquille Barrett able to record his fifth sack of the season. Nice play there by Shaq Barrett, and he was always going to be hard-pressed to match his 2019 output, where his 19 and a half sacks led the NFL. But still in 2020, he put eight on the board and remains a key cog in the Buccaneers' defense. So now after the sack, Winston and the Saints needing to figure out what to do. Tough play, third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's got this one complete to Callaway. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Here's Blake Gillikin now. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And they come into this one riding that nice long win streak. And remember, next weekend is an open week for them. So if they can get the win here, a lot of momentum into that time off. It certainly is. And if you're wondering if anybody's saying, boy, this is coming at a bad time, we want to keep playing. The answer can be yes, because when teams are on a hot streak, they want to keep going. But what the veterans are telling the young guys in the locker room, an open week is always good, guys. Take it and let's go with it. Fournette, a first down carry. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. So, Charles, you talk about this offense uh, this week eight of the 2021 campaign. Now, normally this would be the halfway point of the season, but as we all know, this now a 17-game regular season. And because of that, it seems like now maybe more than ever, getting your open week to occur later in the season, that could be a pretty big advantage. Brandon, it's always been a big advantage, and now, as you pointed out, the possibility of it becoming huge, likely. Most teams want that later open date because of injuries, you know, getting that rest before the playoff push, all of those things. Sometimes when you get an open date early in the season, it's not really much of an advantage. You might be playing well, not slows down your momentum. This is a big deal, and teams definitely like it. The later, the better. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Now Brady. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. So here's a first and ten at the 38. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. He was out there waving his arm. Sean Payton not liking that last call. He's going to go ahead and challenge it. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because it didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Brady's throw there complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. A handoff to Fournette. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 66 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And he holds it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Cameron Bray, his second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead.
There's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure you just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. I think we're sensing a trend here. Two first-half touchdowns. After going for two after the first score, CD, I thought maybe they would kick the PAT here. No, they get two more. No, they decided to really press the advantage because, remember, getting the two after the first score, you've already got the other team back on their heels if they're going to mount a comeback. But to go up two scores and two two-point conversions, you've really got them thinking on the other sideline. First down, Winston. Looking for Thomas, but that's intercepted. Picked off by Levante David. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Shotgun now for Brady. He'll check Dang this one off to Fournette. Touchdown! Leonard Fournette with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Buccaneers are able to widen their lead here in this first half. And now Coach Bruce Arians has made the call. His guys will go for two. Brady's going to look to throw. And the Buccaneers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Thorough domination right now, and the game plan is simple, obviously, Charles. They're going for two after every touchdown, and it's 24 to nothing. Don't you just get the sense right now that they're just flexing? I mean, you'd be able to do whatever they want, how they want, three two-point conversions, and now they're up 24 to zip, so essentially they gained a field goal out of it without even trotting the kicker out there. Jameis Winston and the Saints ready to go back again on offense. The second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself, and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand, or it could get worse. Now they got to get to the line quickly. The first down throw for Winston. He gets it complete to Harris. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Jameis again. He'll find its tight end. It's Adam Troutman. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 26. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Jameis to throw it. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Now, the scoreboard still does not look good, but at least they polished off that goose egg. Yeah, they've been thoroughly outplayed in the first half. Finally, a little spark of life, but it's going to take a lot more to add to that flame for them. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Lux with the extra point, and that'll 
Cut this to a 17-point spread. After the touchdown, wants to kick it off. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Leonard Fournette and the rest of the Bucks' offense set to take over once more. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. Airing this one out for Evans. And that is caught, one-handed. Oh my, he pulled it in. Now the Bucks are gonna use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now Brady. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Keep in mind, they can still get a first down here as they come up on second and inches. Brady. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the rookie, Pete Warner. And the Saints are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, he went on the move there and started rolling out. I thought there was a window, but that window closed quickly, intercepted. And sometimes, despite how big your arm talent is, you don't get enough on a throw when you're on the move as opposed to setting your feet and stepping into one. That may have been the case there, and the defense certainly benefited. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On play action, Winston. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. So we are at halftime here on Halloween. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, make sure you avoid the crazies out there and welcome in everybody to this Halloween edition of our EA Sports Halftime Report. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta, where you see the final score there. Sam Darnold leading the way there as the win gets his guys back to 500 on the year. From there, let's head to the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado. Check in on the Broncos. And they have the lead over the visiting Washington football team. Jerry Judy, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And that game all tied with the visiting Patriots. In the game you're watching, it's who else? Tom Brady with a strong first half. His guys have a two-touchdown lead as we hand it back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. Taking it about the one. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. 
So here are the Bucs to take over on offense. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at about the 32. Now he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second and eight. Now Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. 77 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. From the shotgun now. Here's an inside give. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Here's Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Evans. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big play that time on the catch and run. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. And all the way down inside the five to the four. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Rolling to his right. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They were trying to go to Brown once again, but it'll be second and goal. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're trying to dial up up third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again. And he's got Gronkowski. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rob Gronkowski. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point put through by Suckup. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. To throw is Winston. Oh, look at Thomas, wide open. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. 
Seven yards to pick up there. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. And Dominican Sue able to record his fifth sack of the season. And Dominican Sue continues to be one of the pillars of a stout Buccaneers defense that helped the team win the Super Bowl last year. Six sacks in 2020. And if you don't send extra blockers his way, that number will go up. On third down, Winston. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. 97 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Now Leonard Fournette, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now he'll throw with Brady. Flush to his right. Finding some room at midfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Second down, back to Fournette. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. This is Fournette. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Again, it's Fournette. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. 
Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good. Oh, Fred loses it. It's out. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base and scoring. And he's got Gronkowski. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The fourth touchdown pass of the game for Tom Brady. And the Bucs are about to make it four straight as they add to this fourth quarter advantage. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And that'll increase their lead to 28. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. Their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. Winston and the Saints now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That is caught by Callaway. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big connection on that one. 39 yards. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now here's a throw that's complete. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Here's Winston. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Now Winston. He's going to air one out. And oh, Jameis intercepted a third time. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Bucs are going to get this back to their own 34 yard line. So now it appears they're going to accept the penalty, which means take away the interception. Also means keep your defense on the field. Don't understand this one one bit. But he's got his target, Harris. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Buccaneers are going to take over once again with a football at their own 20 yard line. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. <laughs> hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Meanwhile, here's a shot for the end zone right away, but it's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Touchdown, Saints! Adam Troutman, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth-quarter deficit. 
What's good on the extra point? And that'll cut the lead back down to 21. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation. And now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Brady going to look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Brady's throw complete here. Pulled in by Brady. And he gets this inside the 10 to the 9. It's also a gain of 9. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Now Brady again. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Ronald Jones, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Buccaneers are closing in on a 6-2 and two start as they extend this fourth quarter advantage. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide that they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Extra point put through by Suckup, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory... Not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Winston now. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. On first and 10, Winston. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ballgame. Winston now from the 50. He'll get this to his tight end, Troutman. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 27-yard line. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. 
So for Tampa Bay, they run their mark to six and two on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, the loss drops them back to four and three so far. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Atlanta Falcons come to town. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the